Welcome to Influence You! I'm Summer. I'm Vinny, and today we're talking about the latest diet to make us really thin, the evaporation diet. All you need to do is sip, sauna, and steam to let your body just evaporate. First we sip. To a certain degree, this is a little bit correct. Like how many, how many social media influencers have you met or seen that are saying this same cringy ass shit, dude. I've seen copious amounts of even medical professionals. Well, I can't even really identify if they are medical professionals. They just wear those like big long green shirts that are like weirdly shapen that like look like they're buttoned, but they're not actually buttoned. They're just kind of woven in between each other. And they go, guys, if you really are serious about your weight loss in 2024, make sure you check the link in the description because guess what? I'm starting a promotion down there. And I've really, I'm really serious about this. I think that this is gonna actually help people and I think that this is the way to do it. So check in the link in the description and make sure you check out my all new Ginseng tea. It's gonna help you lose 40 pounds in 45 minutes. All you have to do is order it. Just ordering it alone will have you lose 10 pounds right off the top and I guarantee that. Um, as you know, I've been married for 45 years. I just got divorced with my, my most recent wife and because I'm so hot now, I'm so incredibly attractive because I've been using this Ginseng tea, I lost 450 pounds my starting weight was 125 and i'm just i look the best i've ever looked ever or the big social media influencers that go yeah guys make sure you check out my gym shark link down below in the description and make sure you check out my g fuel too make sure you do all of that promotion code in the comment section 25 percent off if you order in the next two minutes so make sure you do that guys and also check out my cookbook if you want 15 abs just like me i see that consistently and I don't know how many times I look in the comment section for this shit. And I don't know if it's like bots. I hope it's bots. But I see people in the comment section like, oh my God, where's the link? I need this now. Like, I need this today. I'm trying to lose this 45 pounds. I've been trying to lose this 45 pounds for, for eight years. And I think this is a way to do it. And I'm just saying like, it's tea. Like, I don't know if you guys realize this, but you can't just add something. Like, you're literally adding it. You're not taking something away, which by definition, that would improve your chances of losing weight. But you're literally changing nothing about your diet and you're adding in tea. And somehow that's going to make you lose more weight. What is this tea doing, bro? Like, what is it like evaporating the, the weight off your body? Or... I don't know about the steaming. I guess like if you put yourself in a sauna, you will lose weight from the, I guess the, the, the water evaporating off your body or sweating it out, I guess. But that's not real weight. Kind of like how my friend used to call me up and go, bro, I haven't took a shit in two weeks and I'm going to officially drop this big ass load right now in the toilet. I'm going to tell you right now, I weigh 325 pounds, but when I take this shit, I'm going to call you back and I'm going to tell you how much it was. And then he'll call me back like 45 minutes later and go, bro, you won't believe this shit. I'm 200, I'm 282 pounds right now. And I'm looking like, okay, he's like, bro, this shit's really working, bro. I'm really losing weight right now. It's crazy. And it's not real weight. Like you just took a big ass shit because you didn't take a shit for like weeks at a time, which by the way, I don't recommend not pooping. That's not something you should be doing, at least not purposefully. So you can get like artificial weight loss and feel good about the weight that you just lost on the fucking, on the, uh, you know, on the scale because you took a giant shit, but whatever. This does exist. Um, I guess maybe if your name is like Gwyneth Paltrow, it might be okay too. Remember when she was talking to people and she was telling people to like steam their vaginas? I don't know exactly what you mean by steaming your vagina like it's a rotisserie chicken or something like that, but I'm all for it. Steam your vagina and steam your penis too. And by the way, I, they, like, this outfit that they got going on right here, dude, this like early 2000s Justin Bieber from 2015 with the glasses that Usher's wearing and then the Pharrell Williams uh, role play over here, dude. It's peak, peak, peak goodness. These people are like perpetually stuck in 2010. Sona! Steam! Damn, your breath is hot as fuck if you got that shit coming out there. Sip! Sona! Steam! Oh my god, I can feel myself evaporating. You know, funny enough though, even though this is like kind of a little bit accurate, um, it's also really sad given the fact that these women are literally advocating for you to stay fat in, in a very real way. The woman on the right, Fierce Fatty or Vinny, I, I don't know who, why anybody would ever name their child Vinny, but they uh, are a PR person, like somebody that you would hire like in your company if your company was trying to be more inclusive or whatever, which I don't really even understand what inclusivity means anymore, dude. Like if we're talking about inclusivity and you're talking about including fat people in something, it's like, what do you... <laughs> What? What do you mean inclusivity of fat people? But 
whatever. Yeah, we're including fat people and stuff now. So, you know, back in the day, it was like, hey, man, we got to stop these people from being so racist, dude. Uh, we got to stop referring to black people as guys that walk in with ankle bracelets that smell like cocoa butter. You know, now it's gone, right? Because we've improved our society. But uh, nowadays, what it's more like is we've reached a pinnacle in our company, but we want to make it worse. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually hire this professional that charges $1,800 a minute. And then they're going to come in and they're going to teach us about how fat people are supposed to inc be inclusive and it's going to be amazing. And yes, they smell bad, but guess what? That's actually not a bad smell. If you're fat phobic, you would think it's bad and it's not bad. So stop saying it's bad. Okay. Stop saying it's bad. They farted in your face. Accept it. It's the beauty of being fat. Okay. Stop being fat phobic. But this person is actually one of those people, like the people that come into your work and give you seminars and tell you how much of a bad person you are because you thought that Sarah uh, smelt like literal egg water. So yeah, stop doing that. Okay, that's that's actually them. I love so sad. Follow us for more health tips, ladies. True. Nothing tastes as good as steam. <laughs> Nothing tastes as good as steam is probably just a play on the whole like. Nothing tastes as good as thin feels, which is, I mean, I, I, let's be honest here for a second, dude. I probably agree with that. You know, your 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 time on the earth is very limited. I mean, it's not as limited as like a, a dog or like a, I don't know, maybe like a fruit fly or something like that, but it's pretty limited in the grand spectrum of things. I mean, that the earth has been around for like, I don't know if you're like one of those Christians that believe that earth has been around for like 4,000 years or something like that, but most people probably believe that the earth's been around for like 4 billion years or something like that. So you're like nothing in comparison to that. I mean, you're not nothing. You're obviously amazing, but you know what I'm saying. So you have a very limited amount of time on the earth and most people want to get as much out of it as humanly possible. And sure, maybe getting as much out of that could be you indulging in the art of satisfying your mouth through the realm of eating high quality, sorry, high denomination foods with a lot of calories. Sure. But uh, for most people, I think it's probably experiences. It's probably having, you know, time with family, friends, and doing the things that you really enjoy. And food is cool, but, like, can we limit that to certain times, certain scenarios? Like, if you're eating Thanksgiving dinner every day, it kind of takes away from the fact that you have Thanksgiving dinner once a year. You know what I'm talking about, dude? Like, at that point, it just kind of becomes – you're doing that every day at that point, right? So I would go and probably say that if you're fat – yeah, try to try to limit your food intake in the sense of like reducing calories and go on more walks using your legs, which is uh, good, by the way. I've been told that using your legs is very fun. It's awesome, especially if you have legs. If you don't have legs, then this doesn't apply to you. Sorry, by the way. Um, sucks that you don't have legs. And you know what I was thinking about this the other day? I'm going to die on this hill. I think that if I had to choose, if I had to date somebody and I had to choose between somebody that did have, if, if, if I had to choose between two people and one person had one leg and the other person had two legs, I would probably go for the person that had two legs because I don't know, dude, for me personally, it just kind of seems like one leg is just not going to work for me. Uh, two legs, though, that seems pretty good. Um, personally speaking, that's just my personal preference. I know there's going to be a lot of people that think I'm a bad person for that. But being a two-legged person such as myself, I I don't know. Like, I'm not saying it couldn't work if it was one leg. But if I had a choice, I'd probably go for the two-legged person because I like walking. But walking is very, very beneficial. And if you can do it with relative ease, uh, why wouldn't you? You know, it's awesome. I know that we have cars, automobiles, and scooters. I see a lot of guys nowadays running down the street with those scooters, and it's really cool. But sometimes I think you're getting rid of the novelty of looking at houses and trees, and sometimes even looking at squirrels doing weird shit in trees. Like the other day, I was walking down the street, and I saw a, what are those guys that are in like the, the trees with the little like masks on? You know what I'm talking about? Like these guys that are just like in the tree and shit, or whatever, those guys. They were running through the trees, and I thought it was so cool, bro. And uh, chickmunks, not chickmunks, um, raccoons, right? Cool guys. Obviously, I wouldn't want to talk to them up close because I heard that they have the rabies, and they also have other diseases like STDs and stuff, which I'm not trying to come, not trying to get any of that. So, but it was cool because, like, normally you wouldn't see that if you were sitting in a car because you can't because you have to like look at the road. So I guess maybe if it ran out in front of you, maybe you can see it, but that's not really necessarily you enjoying the environment. It's just kind of you, just like you know, doo -doo, doo -doo, whatever. Like it's you know, fucking. I don't think anybody's really – does anybody care if they ran over a raccoon? Maybe if it had a name. If, it, if the raccoon had a name, you'd probably feel bad. But if it was like, oh, you ran over that raccoon, I'd be like, yep. <laughs> but if you were like, oh, man, you ran over Jimmy, I'd be like, oh, did I? Fuck, dude, damn. Oh, why'd you let him out, you know? I don't know. Have that dude on a fucking leash, bro. What are you doing? I'm sorry. This just kind of blew my mind because – my Roman Empire is 
how even as conventionally pretty fat women, I can never get a normal compliment. It's never you're pretty. It's always you have a great face, features, eyes, eyebrows, and I hate it because most of the time, Okay, first of all, I don't even understand the whole My Roman Empire. Uh, my Roman Empire, the idea of the Roman Empire thing was, like, guys are subconsciously thinking about this, like, I don't know, one time in the, in, in the history of humanity where, I don't know, I, I, I have a tendency of doing this, too, thinking about the Roman Empire. Sometimes I'll go on binges of, of learning things that are completely irrelevant that will maybe never, ever help me at all in my everyday life. Like, for instance, last month I was learning about... Um, the My Mycenaeans and ancient Greece, like before the the actual like Spartans and Athenians and all this other stuff. So I was learning about that. And now I'm probably into like the Civil War um, of America. So like I'm really into it. But guess what? Like a month ago, that was that. And then in between that, I was learning about Star Wars. So, you know, again, but it was like, I already know everything I need to know about Star Wars. So I'm just like rehashing a lot of that stuff and it gets boring real quick. So I'm now learning about like Ulysses S. Grant and how big his dick was and uh, Abraham Lincoln, and I'm learning, you know, even though I know a lot about that stuff, but it's still fun to learn about that stuff. But anyway, um, this is a dumb statement. If somebody says you're pretty, and you have great features and things such as so forth, what they're actually doing is they're not saying that you're pretty. What they're actually saying is that what's underneath is pretty. So when somebody says like you have a great face, they're more or less telling you that you would be really, really hot if you weren't ugly. And also, they're also saying like your features are nice, which is not really a good compliment because if you're telling me my features are good, you're saying everything else around it is musty and busted, That which is true, by the way. Uh, I'm not afraid to say this, dude. If you're fat, you probably have no idea what you look like. I mean, you probably have an idea of the features that you have. So like you have really nice eyes or your jawline definition. But if you have to literally take your face and pull it up and then look at your jawline from that point of view, that's an issue. That's not something you should be able to do unless your name is like Joe Biden or something like that. If you're old, it's fine. But if you're like 24 and you're pulling up your face to see where your jawline starts, that's not an indication of something that's good. I'm gonna let you know right now. Your jawline is hiding and the rest of your face is hiding too. You could be a 10, but you're ugly because you're not using, you're not utilizing the genetics that your parents gave you. And a lot of these people could be very, very attractive, but they're just sitting there perpetually eating copious amounts of calories and forbidding themselves from being pretty. And it's really sad. Some people go their entire lives just big bellied and they'll never actually know what they look like. And I know that it is, it's kind of like a, oh, I'm not going to follow along with the standards of society. I'm going to like be outside the box. I'm going to be weird or whatever, because conventionally attractive people are hashtag gay dog or something like that. I don't fucking know. Um, but I just think you're stupid. Like, what are you fucking talking about? You're not, you're not cool because you're fat. Like, you're not cool because you're like, I don't know, anti-cultural or whatever, dude. You're just dying. Like, it's not, I don't know what to tell you. Like, you're just like one of those weird people that was like, oh, wow, we're fighting against a patriarchy by having periods and painting with our period blood. Like, what are you doing, dude? That stinks. Like, literally smells. What are you doing right now? That's weird. And some of those girls were just, you know, like, oh, yeah, I had my period two weeks ago in preparation for this. I saved it. And I'm just thinking, like, damn, bro, that's, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> you couldn't wait for the next cycle, bro? Like, what do you, where'd you even keep that shit? But it, it gross, really gross. It kind of reminded me of that one, you guys remember that one girl that, like, she was on YouTube not too long ago. She was like, guys, I have this great skincare technique. It's, I literally use semen. I use semen for my skincare. I rub it on my face and she had a whole tutorial about how she applied it and how she put it on her face and things like that. And she had it in a jar. And I was just thinking when I saw that video of the uh, of when she pulled out the jar and I was just thinking like, how down bad are you of a guy to sit there and beat off into a jar for a woman? Uh, if it were me, I would, and she was like, hey, I'm gonna need more um, you know, nut butter or whatever you want to call it, I would just go, no problem. Um, I'll come over right now. I'll give it to you fresh. I'll laminate your shit fresh right now. Forget about the jar. I'll come whenever you need it. Whatever, whatever. Obviously I'm gonna need some assistance, but regardless of that, I mean, think about the scenario you got to be in how, you know, you're deep friend zone. If you're sitting there just beating off into a jar for a girl so she can apply it to her face when you're not going to be there to, to apply it for her, dude. Like, you know, I don't know. Where's you know, they and they say chivalry's, you know, like, where is it? Where is chivalry, dude? You know what I'm talking about? Where, where, where is it? But uh, anyway, I don't even know what we're talking about, man. Let's go. Because I see so many fat people talking about, like, 
<laughs> and especially fat women talking about how they'll get the compliment that's like, you have such a pretty face. What a shame. I never got that. That's really sad. Damn, dude. You couldn't even get the compliment. You know how sad it is to say like, oh, yeah, me being fat, I still never got the you have pretty features compliment. That means you just never got any compliments. If so, can you like what if somebody was like, oh, my God, you're just so you have nice feet. That's that. Whoa. First of all, dude. Or if somebody says you look pretty today, I'm always looking at that like uh, today, today. What about yesterday or the day before that? What are you trying to say right now? What is the, what is, what do you, what, 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 what exactly are you trying to tell me? You know, like it's a little bit disrespectful, kind of like that one song, like you by, what, what's that guy's name that did a lot of cocaine? You are so beautiful to me. I'd be looking at that dude like, first of all, dude, okay, look, I'm beautiful to a lot of people and I get it. Like you're trying to be romantic right now and there's a whole bunch of candles on the floor and rose petals and stuff that you bought off Sheen for a dollar fifty. That some Indonesian kid probably made with his blood, sweat, and tears, literally. But uh, I'm beautiful to a lot of people, okay? First of all. Ever in my life. And so I just was like, well, I don't have a pretty face. Even though, like, I think I have a pretty face, but... Yeah, well, like, you know, hey, we all think we all think things that are untrue, obviously. Uh, I think I'm a Jedi. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying, dude. Uh, look, I think you can have your own inner idea of what you are. But most of the time you get what other people give you and that's probably accurate like for instance if you're telling yourself i'm a 10 i'm a 10 i'm a 10 and you ask multiple people like hey what would you rate me and they go yeah you're like a four and you get multiple fours across the board or around that and you still think you're a 10 you're dumb you're not a 10 and most likely you're probably that four and that's okay to be a four i mean it's not the best but it's okay to be around that thing it's just accept it uh, you're musty it is what it is whatever but i think it's because my face is fat so no one's gonna say you have such a pretty face it's a shame about your body they're gonna say oh but you have these features and so i do get complimented on my specific face facial features, like your chin or like what what facial features man i've gotten compliments before on my facial features um but sometimes they're a little off like i remember one time somebody was like wow you look like you smoke weed and i was like uh, uh, what do you mean? Like, do I look homeless? Do I look deplorable? Like, what are you unemployed? Like, what do you mean? I look, you know what I'm talking about? Like, I remember somebody had told me one time that I look like I smell and I thought, why, why man? Like, why would you, what does that even mean? Like, what are you talking about that? You know, it's, just, it's so weird sometimes when people will just give you compliments and you think that they're nice at first. And then you look back and you're like, wait a minute, that was not the best compliment. You know, that's not, you said I look like who? Danny DeVito? I mean, I, he's a prolific actor. Yeah, I like, I really like Danny DeVito, but I look like Danny DeVito. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes it's like, oh, wow. Wait, hold on. Sometimes, and that feels way worse because it's like people being like, I found one good thing. And that has always felt just like super, super patronizing and demeaning to me. But you I probably, you probably just don't look the best. I'm gonna keep it a buck. And that's okay for you don't have to look all the time good and by the way just it's a double-edged sword because i know people that are you know very very attractive individuals that are uh by most people's calibers a 10 out of 10 and they get compliments consistently all the time and that is also agonizing because you're noticed a lot more and people are like for instance i know i dated this one girl and she was gorgeous beyond gorgeous i'm not bragging and me normally, I would walk down the street, nobody would even look at me. And which is a benefit a lot of times because I could rob people and they'll never know. And I'm walking down the street with this girl and the amount of people that looked at me and like looked at her and then looked at me, I didn't, I didn't realize how crazy it was, but it almost kind of, it almost kind of seemed like I became a character almost. Like if we were playing a video game, I was the sidekick to this girl and it was crazy because I met this girl and she was like, oh yeah, I get stopped in the street a lot, but it was like a normal thing for her. She had not realized how prolific it was because when I was with her and people were stopping her, which was severely reduced because obviously I was her boyfriend at the time and the dudes that would have approached her would not have approached her there because naturally I was holding hands with her, I'm gay. And we were, you know, being lovey-dovey and stuff like that. But the amount of people that would still stop her and me and go, oh my God, like you're so gorgeous. Oh my God, like your hair is just this. Your hair is so amazing. I love your style. I really love the, oh my God, your skin is so great. And I'm just looking like, 
does this happen a lot? And he's like, oh, um, yeah, I get compliments every once in a while. You don't? And I'm looking like, I don't even think I got a compliment since like four years ago. Like I, I the last compliment I got was like my mom telling me I wasn't that ugly. And like you got like 15 compliments in the last three hours. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's light for me. And I'm just thinking like some people are just living different lives. And it could be a good thing or a bad thing. Because I know in her scenario, she was getting hassled by dudes. And for a long time, I didn't even realize that women were getting these particular types of interactions. I've talked to girls before that were like, I get stopped by guys. Dudes are really inappropriate. And for me, I see that and I go, I, I'd never seen that before. Like, that's crazy. Like, sure, I've seen some scenarios or whatever. But when I was with this girl, I really saw it. I really saw it. When I was on the phone with her, she was like, I need to call you. There are guys literally driving next to me and they're trying to talk to me, telling me to get into the car. They're slowing down. They're blocking traffic. And I'm just thinking like, are you serious? Like I was asking, I was like, are you like, are you joking? She was like, no. And they were, there was guys like dudes that would just stop this girl in the middle of the grocery store and force her to give her give her give them their her phone number and it's just like what the fuck is going on so there's give and take right there's give and take um if you're ugly you probably don't get approached which is a benefit or if you're really attractive you probably get so approached that it's not good so there's i mean it's good to be in the middle ground where uh i don't think i think i'm probably like a five and i don't really get like approached ever uh, but, but i've gotten approached by a lot of gay men though like a lot of homosexual men have approached me and asked me if i was gay which is Anyway, I think it makes a lot of sense that like having a fatter face, I don't get told that like your face is the salvageable part. I get told that like, oh, you have nice eyebrows, you have nice lips, you have nice nose, like whatever. Like who's lying to you? All of those specific things are kind of what I get complimented on the most. And yeah, I think it's just to me, it always came across as like the more specific people have to be, the more they are reaching. And now the way True. I would interpret that is like people hate fat. Fat is bad. Fat is unattractive to them. Fat is unattractive for most people. And they're trying to give you the benefit of the doubt while giving you a compliment. Like they don't want to be mean, but they're also not going to be untruthful. So they're going to point something out about you. And you know what, dude? I mean, take what you get at that point. You're literally working in a framework that is... It, I don't even know what to say. Like, honestly speaking, dude, that's like driving a really, really like beat up car and you're forcing somebody to point out that the tires are nice. Like, yeah, sure. Like, I get it. And I'm not even trying to be mean necessarily. I'm not saying that she's unattractive, but when you're fat, you're fundamentally lowering yourself on the scale of attractiveness. And it's really sad because a lot of these people have a hard time finding relationships and they don't realize that being attractive really helps like a lot, okay? And uh, when you're fat, you're just not attractive. You're literally blowing out all of your features. You're just perpetually coating them in layers and layers of fat and looking like all the other fat people sub simultaneously, it's not a good thing. Like it's not a flex. Like if I can't see your jawline, but you had a jawline, I don't know that you have a jawline, right? And a lot of people do like the health markers. A lot of people do like seeing rib cage. A lot of people do like seeing the muscle definition. A lot of people do like seeing these facial features. And if they're being coated, that doesn't mean that you're healthy. Sorry. Anything that's fat, they will not compliment. So it's like my face is fat, so they're not going to compliment my face. But my eyes can't be fat, so they'll compliment my eyes. That's really sad to say, actually, though. That's like, that's really, really disgustingly sad. What is the most offensive and demeaning representation of a fat character in entertainment and media that you have ever seen? I think I know my answer, and it's this shit. Oh, man, dude. Man, I actually really like this movie. I know it was garbage. I know it was shit. I know that it wasn't a good movie. But, dude, man, oh, it was funny, right? I remember when this movie came out and we had a really, really obese uh, girl in my school. This was like middle school when this movie came out for me. And, um, dude, I watched the movie. I thought it was hilarious. But they used to make fun of this really overweight uh, girl that I went to school with. And, obviously, I don't condone that particular type of bullying, things like that, dude. But this girl um, in high in, in middle school, dude, she was a bitch to me, dude, 100%. She would make fun of me and shit. She would push me around. Like, I'm just looking like, dude, in, in middle school, I was like 90 pounds, maybe less, to be honest, dude. And she would push me around and shit. And she was fat as fuck. Dude. I remember when one kid coughed a loogie right into her book bag and zipped it back up. And then I was like, good, yeah, do that shit. That's, that's the right move. That's the fucking right move. I, I really did not like that girl, but I hope she's doing well now, bro. And if you want to get into this with me, I am having a hate watch party. I also think it's like really interesting that for this particular girl, more than Tracy, uh, she really only has like things that she can identify as offensive in media from like 
10 years ago or more in some cases. And you're just like, bro, like, if anything, if I'm going to be honest with you, uh, if the pendulum was, like, really, really far on the, oh, let's make fun of fat people and be really not inclusive at all, it's uh, switched over so, so drastically that sometimes I question whether or not the art is even sal salvageable after all the inclusion and things such and so forth, right? It's obviously not good on either end because if you're just making art just perpetually dunk on fat people or disabled people, like, that's obviously not good. But if, then if you're, like, throwing minorities and disabled people in movies and tv shows just because you feel bad for them it's obviously not going to be good either right like i've been watching a show like star wars acolyte which a lot of people have been telling me that it's really bad they're like oh it's terrible dave and i watched the show and i'm like ah you know it's not bad it's not the it's not the worst right and i watched obi-wan kenobi that show was fucking terrible and i was watching the show and i was like i don't i just don't i mean sure there's a lot of inconsistencies and there's problems but i was like i just don't see the issues right but then i watched the interviews with the actors and then i watched the interviews with the people that made the show and i was like what do you guys like these people have some identity politics on the brain 24 7 and it's really sad to say that because nobody gives a fuck that you're throwing women into a show as long as the show's good like nobody cares that there's a black guy in the show or a guy from korea in the show nobody cares like i don't know why so many people think that like here in america we're just all perpetually racist and the only way that we can remedy that is like throwing minorities in random pieces of art and hoping that it like it's good it's not it doesn't work like that okay I just like you know what i'm talking about and that's really fucking sad so in today's world, I think that the pendulum has swung so far out of the other side that it's like outside the 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 clock at this point. Like the wood is shattered, dude. The fucking pendulum is swinging out into fucking space. Like we've really overcorrected, and it happens a lot like that. I know that when you're in a relationship, for instance, I was a bitch in relationships before. I was a perpetual like pussy boy, and I was letting the person do whatever they want. But then you get into a relationship after that, and you're like, no, you're not doing anything. You're gonna stay at home all day, and you're gonna wear, you're gonna you're gonna wear the 1950s housewife and you're gonna make me lemonade and stuff but then there's like a good middle middle ground where you have rules and regulations but you're also lenient and you compromise like there's you know what i'm talking about i hope in the next 10 15 years uh, we reach like a good middle <laughs> a, a good middle ground there to discuss it because i simply cannot watch it alone. by the way eddie murphy looks really good for his age i watched that new movie with Eddie Murphy, um, what's that shit called? Bad Boys or whatever? I don't know, bro. The black guy movie with the fucking cops. I don't know what those one's called. But uh, Beverly Hills Cop. And he, what is he, like almost 60, dude? He, he's 65, 63? He looks outrageously good for his age. It is actually insane. I was looking, I was like, oh my god, like this guy literally, I mean, sure, he looks older, but it's not by much, but anyway guys and i'm about to do a podcast episode on it and i'm about to write about it in my dissertation but i like really have to do a full rewatch and i we might watch this uh this podcast on stream so by the way we do streams on the channel and lately i've been streaming literally every single day so if you're watching this video i'm usually live by around 6 p.m est so if you want to come in and talk to me and watch me drink water because i am a pro at lubricating the insides of my mouth with l delectable water can't do it alone so i'm doing it on live on wednesday at 6 eastern and you can also join a zoom meeting where we're going to have a discussion which is on my patreon at the sassy broad tier and above so if you like me desperately need to freaking discuss whatever this was whoo let's have a chat because sometimes it I was a shit movie but it wasn't like come on dude like there was a lot of shit movies in that early 2010s the early aughts and the late aughts it were really shit movies it's okay though do a podcast episode and i'm like i don't even my thoughts aren't even clear enough on this to come right in without talking about it first so we're gonna have a pre-discussion and then you can listen to the podcast on any platform in a couple of weeks but join us on live i think it's gonna be my face but i could flip the camera and also show the video if that's preferable to people whatever you want um let me know but i hope to see you there are we still not ready for a mixed weight romance on screen? This is the headline of an article published in Forbes about a week ago about Bridgerton season two, and it's been getting a lot of backlash. Most of the backlash that I've seen has been people reacting to the fact that this gets called a mixed weight relationship, but nobody bats an eye at mixed weight relationships where the man is fatter, like on King of Queens, The Sopranos, or Family Guy. And I think that is a super valid take, but I want to take a minute and discuss why it feels so notable to people to see a bigger woman with a smaller or more conventionally sized man. And Most of the time, 
Okay, women are usually smaller than men, and it, it, it just generally speaking, like across the board, we do have sexual dimorphism. So women tend to be about 20 to 30 percent shorter and about the same for weight as well. So if a woman is bigger than the guy that they're dating, um, that's crazy. Like I don't like I, I feel like people don't really understand or like maybe they're just really nice. But if you're dating a girl and that girl is like, let's say, for instance, the guy's like his weight that he should be like, so let's say 160 to 180 pounds and the girl is 300 pounds or 200 pounds. Dude, um, do you not feel any particular type of way like you literally being supposed to be bigger than this girl? Like you're literally your entire genetic makeup is supposed to be bigger than this woman. And yet she is still big is bigger than you. Like, I don't know, like for me personally, it just kind of feels a little bit awkward, feels a little bit weird to me. I don't really like that. It's not even the really the social issue of it. It's just more so like this just shouldn't be happening. And I get it that it's very easy to eat a lot of food. And for a lot of women, for instance, it's very difficult to understand that you're a smaller person and it's going to be harder for you to not gain weight because you're seeing all these other people that can eat a lot of food. Like I have a guy friend who's like six foot four, beautiful man, a beautiful black man. And he can eat a lot. Like he could easily eat a third more than me and he would never gain weight. And that's amazing for him. But for me, I couldn't do that. Now, it's not a really big issue for me because I have to like literally force myself to eat. And I have struggles with like actually indulging in the art of satisfying my mouth with food. But but for, for a lot of women, I can see that it might be an issue because a lot of women do have big appetites or maybe they condition themselves to believe that this is the appetite they should have, right? A lot of people don't even realize that their portion sizes are two, three, four sizes bigger than what they should be because here in America, we do things big and we do it real big too, which is one of the reasons why I love America so much. Like I love the overindulgence, but I also think it's not a good thing a lot of times. But the point I'm making is if you're really, really big as a woman and you're bigger than the guy, that's way worse than the guy being bigger than you because at least that makes sense to a certain degree, right? And it's almost more acceptable because it's like men are usually a little bit bigger usually. Once they hit like 30 or 40, the gut starts coming out. So it's a little bit more presentable where women um, are held up to a different standard, almost kind of like uh, men are held. Okay. The way that men are judged in society versus how women are judged in how women are judged in society. This is a major black pill, by the way. But like women are definitely judged based off their physical appearance way more than men. Men don't even men almost don't even have a standard for the most part. Like what you have to wear jeans and not flip flops, I guess, and a t shirt. Where women are like contouring completely. I they're like just 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 completely making new different body types every single day and different shit while men are wearing the same clothes for days and days and days on end. I haven't even like these jeans that I'm wearing right now. I just washed these jeans for the first time in like four months. Right? So it's like, there's the standards, right? So, but I have never met a woman that didn't wash her clothes uh, day in, day out and things such as so forth. Women buy a lot more clothes and stuff like that. Like there's obviously differences between men and women in societies. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying it's something to be aware of. And I should clarify here, by bigger, I mean bigger than the Hollywood standard because actually is this a mixed weight relationship in the way of like, does she weigh more than he does? Probably not. They're probably the same weight or he weighs more in the case of Bridget. If they weigh the same, it's still not good. Unless your wife or girlfriend is like an Olympic athlete or something like that. It's not good. In season three. But the reason it gets called mixed weight is because he fits the male body standard and she does not fit the female body standard at least as it has been laid out by entertainment in the past several decades. And the reason this is the type of relationship that gets backlashed where the man fits the beauty standard and the woman doesn't quite, and I know, yes, Nicola Coughlin's very beautiful, but she doesn't look like the majority of women who have led historical romances, like in that genre, she has a rounder face, she has like a bigger chest, like she just looks bigger than the usual type of protagonist we see in this genre. And that is fine to acknowledge and doesn't mean that she's ugly or fat. It does mean she's fat by Hollywood standards, which I call entertainment fat. And I have another video explaining this if you want to check it out. But the reason that people freak out when it's the woman who is deemed too big and therefore somehow bigger than the man, even if they're actually not that different in size, is because it fucks with our perception of gender role. Nobody bats an eye when, say, Peter Griffin is twice the size of his wife because they still fit in their assigned gender role. And women's assigned gender role is to be small, is to be the pursued instead of the pursuer. And you will see people talking about that on here, how feminine energy is being pursued and masculine energy is chasing. Yeah, I mean, 
she's right about that. But it's like ignoring key, it's ignoring key biological traits. Women are smaller than men. That's a factual statement. Women usually can't lift as much as men. Men can usually go longer. I mean, look at any man versus women's sports. Like, there's nothing sexist about saying that women are uh, women are usually weaker than men, physically speaking. Now, if we're talking about like mentally speaking. It turns out that women might be a little bit smarter than men, at least in the middle. Like, for instance, I know I, this really fucked with me for a long time, but uh, I actually didn't even understand the, the chart. But, like, basically how it would work is, according to the statistics, if there was, like, a line graph, okay, women are, on average, smarter than men. So, like, in the middle, there's a lot of women that are, like, averagely smart, right? But on the ends for men, they're really smart or they're really dumb. Like, we got genuses and then we got people that are, like, cavemen. Hence why most of the people that are in prison are men. So, and all the people that make like tons and tons of money are also men. So, in the middle, like women are an average smarter than men, but men can be very, very smart, right? So, there are definitely gender roles, and I know that a lot of people like to dismantle gender roles, but to a certain degree, they're always going to be there because of biology, and I'm not even one of these people necessarily that thinks that gender roles are set in stone, and obviously we know that they're not set in stone because what gender roles were, say, 50 years ago compared to what they are now are, they're completely different. Like, you know, women work, women take care of the house, true. Men also take care of the house. Men also do all that stuff too, and women also do all the stuff that men conventionally used to do. So... It just depends on what you're talking about. But generally speaking, women are weaker and smaller than men. So if a woman is bigger than a man, that's weird. Uh, biologically speaking, and most people catch on to that. Most people are going to see that shit and go, that's uncomfortable to look at. You know, like that's, you know what I'm talking about? That's, you know, let me know down below what you think about that. And we as human beings have a very narrow symbolism that we will assign to things. We think very literally a lot of the time, especially when media and culture have conditioned us to associate these things together. So when we see a woman with a bigger body, a lot of us automatically assume she is less feminine. She's less feminine in a general way. Like she's less feminine in, in, a, in a physical way because the feminine, the fem, okay, look, I'm not shitting on any woman that has an unconventional body. Like I'm not saying that, but you can't, you can't deny what do you think of when you think of a man, right? You're thinking of Henry Cavill. You're thinking about Brad Pitt from Troy. You're thinking about guys that are, I don't know, taller, wider in the shoulders, and narrower hips. When you think of a, a traditional feminine body, you're thinking about big hips. You're thinking about smaller shoulders, and you're thinking about big eyes, right? Let's be honest here for a second, okay? Let's stop. Let's stop. That's what you're thinking about. Now, it's okay if you're outside those norms. I'm not saying that you can't find somebody to be with if you're outside those norms. Obviously, my body is shaped like a triangle. Sorry, my body is shaped like a rectangle. So I, you know, but I've never had a problem getting a girlfriend or anything like that. Um, I'm not bragging or anything like that, but I'm saying like there's always hope for people and you shouldn't like doubt yourself even though you're not fitting exactly within the framework. But there are certain things that you can do to appeal to other genres. Like say whatever you want, dude. It's very attractive for almost anybody if you're fit. It's very attractive if you take care of yourself. It's very attractive if you got your shit together. And those are all things that are traditionally masculine traits, but women can do it too. And they're very attractive for most men as well. So I myself don't even necessarily believe in like the gender roles or whatever the fuck you want to talk about. To a certain degree, I might believe in them depending on which ones you're talking about. But uh, for the most part, dude, shit has changed in the last like, even 10 years, bro. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below about it. Or somehow associate a lack of femininity. Oh, yeah. So like when you're bigger as a woman, you're losing a lot of that like framework that a lot of people would traditionally deem as feminine, if that makes any sense. In the same way that like if a guy was fat, um, he is also losing a lot of the traditional masculine framework. But it's interesting that. OK, so I see a lot of guys nowadays that dress really, really well. I see a lot of guys that like really hyper fixate on making sure their hair is cut, making sure their skincare is good, making sure their clothes fit, making sure they dress very well. And that's not a that's not a masculine trait, okay? And I know a lot of people might go, David, what's wrong with a man dressing well? Nothing. There's literally nothing wrong with it. But I think it's important to say this, bro. When you think of a masculine man, are you thinking about a guy that's really, really well-dressed, that's very well-groomed? No, you're not fucking thinking about that shit. You're thinking about a guy sitting down at his computer desk with a big-ass gut playing League of Legends for 15 hours a day. That's a very, that's a, that's a masculine stereotype. Like a guy that's just like hyper fixated on fucking video games or his work or shit like that. That doesn't give a fuck about what he looks like. In my mind, if you told me what is a masculine man, that is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about a guy that is that doesn't take care of himself, that just like washes like once a fucking month, that makes a stick of deodorant last four years, right? 
it's a very feminine trait for somebody to dress well, take care of themselves. And I know it sucks to say, I know, but that's like, if you were to be, if you were to tell me, give me some stereotypical things, that's what it is. So when I see people that are like, oh, I want to associate more with femininity or this thing. And I, I see people saying incorrect shit. It, it, like this is, this is where it comes. Like so many people nowadays have a very weird idea of what masculine femininity is. And it's so different depending on who you talk to. Because if somebody told me like men need to dress well and this and this, that's a masculine trait. I'm looking at that guy. It's like my head turned. I'm like, that is not a masculine trait. Like having a big gut as a man is probably more masculine than a guy having a six pack, right? You know what I'm saying? Anyway. With a, like a bigger body. And yes, bigger men get feminized too, but a lot of the time, a bigger man with a smaller woman establishes that gender binary in a way that actually makes that man seem more masculine. And you know what? I Okay, I also think that there's like differences between masculine and femininity in what's more accepted in our society. So like, for instance, women are usually more accepted in terms of masculine traits than men are more accepted when it comes to feminine traits. I've seen this copious amounts of times like women can work women can uphold jobs careers go to school all these like traditionally fem sorry all these traditionally masculine traits but nobody likes it when a man picks up traditional feminine traits like maybe he's at home maybe he's cooking the dinner maybe he's a stay-at-home dad or whatever the fuck a lot of people really shit on that and it's really fucked up because a lot of people don't really understand that like women did this for a long time like what's wrong with a guy doing that like if you make enough money and this and that i'm not saying like whatever you want to do that works in your relationship is fine but i just think it's really interesting the amount of times i've seen people just completely shit on men because they're doing the same thing that a woman would have done 50 years ago just in a different time period and things like that and as you know shit has changed in the last few years so i don't know leave it down below again i would love to know what your opinion on that is because he has a thinner woman on his arm it's like if he appears more dominant in comparison to a woman that makes him more masculine a lot of people this is true to a certain degree like okay there's hints of truth in a lot of this stuff but it, it seems like on the extremes we're gonna have to disagree it's true that men do find a lot of validation when it comes to dating or being with a woman that is very, very attractive. And I think probably most women date ugly guys because most guys are ugly, just generally speaking. I think guys are just uglier versions of girls in a lot of cases, but that's okay because women that date uglier men are more or less looking for other things like women are willing to put up with other things uh, if he's uh, ugly or less attractive but he's really funny he's like super good in conversation he's got a lot going for him whereas men um because of the way that social the social hierarchy is set up for women it's more predominant based off the the physical appearance of the woman and less focus like it almost kind of seems like it's secondary or third to have the career the life goals and stuff like that that's really how it is that's why you see a lot of guys that are like older and they're dating women that like are Starbucks baristas and shit like that. Or like men that are bragging like, Oh, I'll date a fucking woman. That's I'll date a fuck a woman that's in debt. Like, I don't give a fuck. I'll date a fuck as long as she's pretty. And I'm always thinking like, what the fuck? What are you guys going to even talk about? Like, I don't, I, sometimes I, I really question where people are going with their relationships. Like, what are you doing in that fucking relationship where you're like 42 and you're dating a woman that's 18 years old? Like, what do you guys even talk about all day? Like, what do you like? She just sits down on the fucking couch on her phone scrolling through TikTok while you're like trading top, like trading fucking stocks in your fucking room for 19 hours, dude. Like, what do you guys do? Like, is is she just there just to be your orifice and give birth to your children, dude? Like, I guess, bro. I mean, if that's what you want to fucking do, more power to you. But simultaneously, I feel like a lot of these people it's very skewed on terms of like what people want in relationships nowadays. And I feel like a lot of people have this like really weird misconception, like that women are just egg sacks or like walking egg sacks and men need to be like the picture of masculinity and work 80 hour fucking work weeks. And you know, uh, when they're home, they're like bottomless fucking husks of no emotion at all because it's gay to talk about how you feel. So I don't know, dude, it's like, uh, obviously you want to, if you're dating somebody, you want somebody to be there. That's actually going to be able to communicate that you're going to be able to process your emotions through. And obviously you want that person to be open enough with you. That's not going to use those things against you, which I've been in relationships before where you say something to somebody and then maybe two months later, they bring up how you were really vulnerable and that was really disgusting. And they gave you the ick or whatever the fuck about that time. You told that, Oh, you know, when my fucking cat died, I really felt really sad and I cried and they bring it up and they go like, you were gay when you said that shit, dude, <laughs> crying over a cat. <laughs> homosexual but 
you obviously want to be with somebody that's like mature enough. Like women uh, are pretty good to talk to. Most women are really good to talk to. And it sucks that a lot of guys just like, I don't know, boil down women to just egg sacks or whatever. And I know this is all very, very literal, but our eye gets used to that. And we are so used to seeing decades of a bigger guy, smaller woman. Yeah, because that's how it always is. Like, what do you mean decades? That's how it's always been in general in terms of our species like women are smaller than men it's not you know sometimes i hear tracy talk and then i think like there's some truth here but she always gets fucked up in in a very drastic place like when she was making that comparison about the baby reindeer girl and she was saying this shit like oh it's just really crazy that women are portrayed like this and you know we just have to be fat and we have to be crazy and i'm just thinking like yeah because that's literally what the shit is about and it like is a true story so what the fuck are you talking about you know like it's very dumb that she would bring up that women are always looked at crazy women are always looked at as fat when the show is based off a true story and it's literally something that literally happened exactly like this and they hired this actor to fit the role of the person that literally looked like that dumb and the same thing here going like oh for decades men have always been seen as bigger and women have always been seen as smaller yeah because we have sexual dimorphism and men are usually bigger than women most of the time so fucking yes no fucking shit no fucking shit, Tracy. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> it's such a it's such a crazy ass thing to even say, though. It's like it's so dumb and it just doesn't need to be said. But yet she still says it that now when we see it reversed, a lot of people are like, that's wrong. And yeah, it's the same thing with obesity. Nobody was fat ever for like the entire genre of our time, uh, time on the earth. You know why? Because we never had enough food to eat in general. So now that we see that people are fat and see it's like. For a long time, nobody knew what human being body human beings could look like with a lot of muscle. Like if you go back to like the Bronze Age versions of people weightlifting or like the Bronze Age bodybuilders, these guys look small compared to guys nowadays. And when they saw these guys building these muscles, right, like Eugene Sandow, the guy that literally is the uh, the guy standing on the the trophy for the Mr. Olympia. If you look at his physique, people at the time were looking at this guy going like, oh my god, like. He literally is shaped like a Greek god. Like, I didn't even know that you can do this. Like, people literally, this is 100 years ago. This is literally like 100 years ago, 120 years ago. And people were going, this is insane. I can't believe this is even possible. Because people weren't able to build that kind of muscle ever. And suddenly, within the period of 100, 120 years, you compare Eugene Sandow, the guy that was on the Mr. The guy that's on the Mr. Olympia uh, trophy, compared to guys now. And you're going... This is night and day. Like, we're, we're doing shit that's so far out of the realm of what everybody thought was possible. But it just kind of becomes normal for us and, like, really, really quick. So when we see human beings that are very, very overweight and obese and, it's, and people look at that and they go, yep, whatever, that's very weird, okay? People being fat is an anomaly. That is actually extreme because for all of time, that has never been possible. You might've had that odd king or that odd queen, like uh, at one point in time that did have a little bit of weight on them, but that was nowhere near to some people we got walking around nowadays or have an inability to walk around nowadays with. It's crazy. So it's really important to point that out that the reason why a lot of people look at people nowadays with like a, whoa, that's crazy because it's never been a thing and i get social media and the media in general has like shown you a lot of examples of this so it just kind of becomes like a normality for you but it most definitely is weird okay it's very weird i don't like the way that looks and a lot of times you'll see people sort of interpret this as they have no chemistry because they don't look right together to me I understand being angry at that double standard, but I think this article definitely does speak to something. If you read the full article, which is, by the way, written by incredibly prolific fat activist Virgie Tovar, who's super, super smart, it gets- We just did a video on Virgie Tovar. Make sure, make sure you check that one out, dude. I didn't even know she was still making those fucking- uh way more into the nuances of how hetero relationships are judged when the woman is perceived as not fitting the thin ideal and the man is. I agree that mixed weight is an oversimplification, especially in this case where the woman in question is very tiny and probably doesn't weigh more than the man. But I, I do think this is something we need to talk about because the fact is a lot of people who are bigger women who date smaller men experience stigma and experience people flirting with their partners and assuming they're just friends and making weird veiled comments to the partner about why would you date this fat girl that sure i don't think it's like very common though i know that when i was dating this one girl 
like uh, as you guys know i'm a snow bunny and i've only ever dated black women i'm not doing it purposefully it just kind of seems like that's whatever i get whenever i throw out my my little you know my fishing rod i get back black ladies but i know for a fact that when i've dated black women before uh the amount of times that I've had guys go into my girlfriend at the time's DMs and going like, oh, um, I know you're dating this white guy, but that's like whatever. Because a lot of people just don't look at me as like a competition or whatever because it's like I'm white. And a lot of those guys were black and they go like, I know that you're meant for me because you're black and therefore I'm black and that should be more compatible than this guy dating you because he's fucking white. Like what are you doing with a white guy? So a lot of people don't look at it as like a competition, right? Or like I'm not. I'm not like actually real or like I'm just a placeholder or something like that for the actual guy that's technically him or whatever the fuck. I've seen that copious amounts of times, which is really sad. Uh, and I've had, I've had it the other way around. Like, why are you dating this guy? He's literally ugly or he's got nothing going for him. Like, I've seen that copious amounts of times too. So I've seen it. I know exactly what she's talking about, but I would very much like to know to what degree is that happening for men? Like, uh, most women are not hitting up guys. I don't know if you guys have ever been on social media before, but it's a very male-dominated space in terms of, like, men hitting up women. I mean, sure, I'm not saying that women don't hit up guys. It happens, obviously. But it's not to any degree. Like, let me answer. Let me ask you a question. How many dick pics have you received as a woman compared to how many vagina pictures have you received as a man? It's not close. It's never going to be fucking close either. It's just like... It's so far, it's so far skewed, okay? Like if there was a teeter-totter and there was like a, if it was a scale and it was like vaginas here, dick pics here, the fucking scale for dick pics would be like in China. It would fucking break through the, the equator and it would go through the fucking earth because that's how many dick pics there are, right? I've never in my life received an unsolicited, I've received a few unsolicited vagina pictures, but me myself, I've received so many unsolicited dick pics, it's actually anomalistic. Like, I sometimes talk to girls and they go, I've received a few dick pics before in my life, and they go, I've received maybe 10. And I'm just thinking, like, 10 is crazy because I think I got 10 last year. And, like, this year is doubling at least. And I don't know why I've received so many penis pictures. I don't know why so many men think that I'm very desirable, orally speaking. I have no idea, but I've received a lot of men and offers to receive their genitalia or even my genitalia to receive for them. And it's always concerning because sometimes I think like, is there something I'm doing? Am I giving off homosexual? I don't know what we're talking about. That is a very real thing that happens because we are so invested in gender roles still as a society that we cannot get past it. And we are so in we're, we're invested in gender roles, but very limitedly compared to what we were like, say, 50, 50 years ago. And that has a lot to do with where we're going in society. So like a lot of people I know we're going off again, but a lot of people a while ago. OK. So like 50 years ago, all you really needed to bring to the table was maybe not even 50 years ago, let's say 60, 70 years ago. All you need to bring to the table as a man was a job. Nowadays, you need a lot more. And that's because having a job is like the bare minimum nowadays. Like back in the day, you could have gotten by with a job because there was not really much that women could do. Like they literally physically could not work. So women nowadays can work. And also uh, the jobs that we have nowadays are way less physical compared to the jobs that we used to have, which were literally guys working and paving fucking roads creating structures and things such and so forth and yes that stuff still occurs i'm not saying that men don't build this stuff okay i'm not saying that but what i am saying is that that's severely diminished in comparison to other jobs where you don't need to be physically active and women can do those jobs really well okay there's a reason why like 70 percent of the people that are graduating from college are women there's a reason why women are making the most money they've ever made ever there's a reason why gender equality has become so paramount in today's world and things such and so forth and there's also a reason why so many men are failing in our society it's because for like a long time uh that's all men need to do and it kind of seems like we've stuck with that like we've seen like men failing to such a degree and women are complaining like there's no good guys out there and i'm just thinking you know it kind of makes a little bit of sense given the fact that like most guys don't even know how to wash their own clothes and do their own dishes or have more than three you know three plates in their house and that's really fucking sad, right? Because, like, why would I want to date a guy that doesn't even know how to do his own dishes? That's terrible. But I'm not saying that's all men. Obviously, there are plenty of men that do know how to do the dishes and do have their shit together and do the, the, the right things that are very appetizing for women. And it all really boils down to if you want to catch a fish, use the correct bait. You can't just expect to get a fish with nothing on the, on the roll. You can't do that. You're going to need something on there. But anyway. 
invested in thinness. Because of course, the other reason that this doesn't make sense to people and that they react so strongly to a woman specifically being in a relationship with a partner who is deemed smaller than her according to society is because women are supposed to be thin and thin is supposed to be the most beautiful thing. Thin is beautiful by definition because you're, it depends on how thin obviously, but if you're in your appropriate body stature, uh, yeah, that's more attractive than somebody being fat because by definition, if you're fat, you're overindulging, which is not an attractive trait for most people. It's okay if there's no food, like if there's no food and you're fat, all right, like that's okay. But if there's plenty of food and you're fat, that just means that you're taking advantage of the food that you have, like when you don't need to. And you're also literally destroying your body, which is not a good thing. At least when you were fat during the Renaissance or before, you were destroying your body, sure, but like nowhere close to the amount of destruction that your body would have been under if you had no food at all. So like, yeah, dude. Um, Yeah, definitely. I don't know why the fuck. Why are you going off so hard in this particular direction? Uh, Tracy, this, this, this is an irrelevant point. It's a dumb point. I don't even know why you bring this shit up. Women by definition are smaller. And if you're fat as a woman or even as a man, it's not an attractive trait to anyone for the most part. And of course, beauty is supposed to dictate every aspect of your life, but especially whether a man picks you. So yeah, because there's a reason why, okay, look, there's a reason why women contour themselves in the way that they do. Women are usually prettier. Women usually are the ones that buy most of the shit in our society. Women are the ones that do all that stuff, right? And whereas men, what are they doing to make themselves more attractive? They're making money. I mean, obviously there's more to it, but that stuff is bare minimum, right? But like making money, being funny, like there are plenty of things that guys can do too, right? But you do the things that make you attractive for the other genre, usually, right? So if you want to be a woman, what are you doing? You're probably doing your makeup. You're probably doing your hair. I'm not saying this stuff is like intrinsic to women, but I'm saying that usually the reason why we have these things in place are to appeal to the other gender. And that's okay. Like you could be doing it for yourself, but make no mistake about it. These things were originally founded in the beliefs of like, I'm going to get a man. I'm going to get a girl. Like I'm going to the gym because I want to get big for a girl. Like I'm making this amount of money because I know that's going to be appetizing for a lady. Right? So like always be thinking about that. Like it's, I know a lot of people think that, oh, we're like so much different from apes. We're so incredibly intelligent, things like that. And I agree we are, but a lot of that stuff boils down to simple biology, dude. A lot of it. So Not when a it. woman isn't thin enough, that we see her meeting that societal standard where we think, oh, of course she would get picked, especially in the context of Hollywood where you almost only see thinner women in romantic leading roles getting picked by men. Because those movies that have a fat woman as the romantic leading role don't get views. Like nobody wants to watch that movie because that shit is unrealistic. And we know that it's unrealistic and it's also kind of sad too. And that again, <laughs> makes people have these reactions like that spectator piece basically shitting on these relationships and calling them unrealistic. Even though it happens that way all the time in real life with a bigger woman dating a smaller man. And those people are facing a lot of stigma and rude comments because it's not the expectation or the standard. You're never gonna appeal to anybody, dude. It is what it is, right? I know that being, when you think of like an interracial relationship, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about a black guy with a white girl. That is the more conventional, that is the more that happens way more often than a white guy dating a black girl. And I know that, right? Like the amount of times that I've been out in public and they go, are you dating this girl? And I go, yep. And they go, wow, that's okay. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. That's great. That's beautiful. It's very, it doesn't happen very often. If there was a show and it was like demonizing that shit, I know that this is an anomaly. I know this is not something that usually happens and that's okay. Like you can make fun of that shit. It's fine. Um, I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, but I'm just saying like you have to expect some form of criticism, some form of backlash, some form of like critician because it's obviously not not the normality so if you're fat and you're dating somebody that's not fat and that happens to be a man and you're a woman you're gonna have to expect there's gonna be some form of like people looking at that and going mm, that looks weird you're big and he's not like a lot of people are gonna say that but it is what it is anyway guys we're gonna end the video here it's a long one today sorry about the long ones uh, let me be honest i know you like the long ones Anyway, guys, uh, you're beautiful. You're amazing. You're spectacular. By the way, I have zero people. And there's nobody subscribed to me right now. You guys are not subscribed. Please subscribe to me. I appreciate that. Uh, I love you. I love you so much if you do. But anybody that is already subscribed or a member of the channel, I appreciate you tremendously. I love you. I really love you. From the bottom and the top of my heart, all the time, you guys are literally beautiful, spectacular, amazing, well-lubricated individuals. If you watch the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in... 
I don't know, dude. Let me think. Water. Type in water because water is really important. And a lot of people don't drink water and you need to drink water. And I'm glad you do drink water because I know you drink water and cutting out the sodas. Even if you only drink a little bit, that's okay. Uh, juices are also terrible. I don't know what the fuck is going on with so many people thinking that juice is good for you. It's not. Depends on the juice, of course, but most juice is not good. But water is really good and it's really delectable and it tastes really good. I don't care what anybody says. I know people say water doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like something. It tastes good in my mouth. But anyway... Um, you also taste good in my mouth. Your, your entire existence, if I walk by you, I inhale. I always go, <gasps> because I want to intake as much of your aura into me as humanly possible because I feel satisfied when I am around you. I feel mm, almost kind of like deified. I feel like that, that my life is better when you're around me. And even right now, you watching this video makes me feel warm and toasty inside on a day where it's 98 degrees, okay? And I'm okay with that. I want you to know, even though it's very, 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 very hot out right now, you making me warmer is only a benefit to me because I know even though I'm suffering with the heat, it doesn't matter because I know that you being here, even though it's hurting me, it makes me feel better. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being so amazing. Thank you for taking the time out of the day to watch this video. I truly appreciate you. I love you. Your entire existence is defined by beauty, divinity, and tastiness. Anyway, guys. If you want to check my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord. All that stuff will be listed down below in the description of this video and the description of this channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.